Uh, the fifth witness. Fifth? Fifth, yes, my lord. I think, Council, you have concluded your examination in chief. I have not concluded. I did not conclude. Colonel Majoyogbe. Uh, before we stopped, <laughs> at the last adjournment, I did ask you this question. Were you given any monetary consideration for the operation in Iyala? No, my lord. <coughs> there was this allegation against you that for the arrest of Chief Shuma Nzeribe, one Chief Ezego gave you a BMW car as compensation. What do you have to say concerning this? That is absolutely incorrect. And I'd like to explain, my lord. In 1997, the same Colonel Idehere, self-appointed counsel to General Abubakar, made this same allegation, and it was thoroughly investigated and found to be false. And I have come today with all the documents relating to that car. That well, car was purchased. All right, tender them, tender them. S excuse me, let him have a look at this. Yes, my lord. There are three letters which were written me. by Dr. Olabimi Matuyibu from Germany concerning the car. I told him I wanted the car, and he wrote three letters. I seek to tender the letters, my lord, and the car particulars. The counsel, can I make don't, a point? Don't mark it. Let's see what it is. You talked about the thing was allegation was investigated. Uh, what is this? There were letters written in 1996 concerning. I'm talking about investigation. He said the allegation was investigated and found to be wrong. We, we did respect, yes. sir. It was it no, was alleged. I don't say you shouldn't deny it, but what about the investigation? Was there any investigation? Well, I don't know anything concerning. He that said part. so just now. He said so just now. The allegation was investigated and was found to be wrong. Uh, Me, Lord, can I answer the question yes. the council doesn't know? Was, no, I don't know whether investigation is what we know investigation to be. This is what I'd like to explain, sir. It was investigated. It was thoroughly investigated uh -huh. by... SIC. By security group, Nigeria Army Intelligence Corps. And they issued their report. This, a, a report was issued which I read thoroughly. Where is the report? Good. The director of military intelligence has that report. And I'd like to explain, sir. Hold it. You are coming here yes, sir. to defend allegation against you. Yes, sir. Which was investigated. Yes, sir. You were cleared. Yes, sir. The report exists. Yes, sir. Why didn't you bring it along? Thank you very much, sir. For over 20 years, I trained security men in this country, not to remove official documents. Because there are three principles that I taught them in 20 years. Don't go on which, preaching. Yes, Where sir. is the report? The report is with the director of military intelligence. I refuse to give you a copy. I did not ask because I'm not entitled to it. We can go. We do respect, my lord. I seek to tender the. Please let the commission. Sorry, you know, excuse me. I think we are trading on very. Can you can you just go back to the point you were making before? Yes, sir. Please, just 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 for the point sir, of explanation. For over twenty years, I trained people in army intelligence, navy intelligence, air intelligence, SSS, prisons, customs, Nigeria police on the handling of official documents, and I always said to them, even upon the pain of death, do not remove official documents. So when the thing was investigated, they showed it to me and cleared me. When this, uh, uh, when this Conor Dehane started the same problem again, it would have been easy to say, give me the document. 
The first principle on document security is the need to know. Second principle, the need to hold. Third principle, the need to take away. I did not have any need to touch those documents because Idehere was accusing me. If I did that, the federal government had the right to prosecute me and nobody will ever trust me with any documents anymore. The director of military intelligence is alive and well. The president was here. He can be asked to come and present that document officially. Thank you, sir. When did you come about this car? So I wrote to my uncle, Dr. Ola Bimi Majoyeobe, a brain surgeon in Germany, and he wrote three letters. Before you go on, we yes. talk about the federal government prosecuting you. Section 10 of the law under which we are set up says, any person who, after service on him of a summons to attend as a witness, or to produce a book, document, or any other thing, and notwithstanding any duty of secrecy, however imposed. So if you tell them that under this section, if you don't produce this thing, you may go to prison, they will give you a copy. That you don't say true. you should extract it from the file. No, yes. they give you a copy, that certified true. true copy. So don't wave this person of secrecy to yes. us. It doesn't mean anything here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. But the director of military intelligence is better pleased to present it officially. Then there is no doubt at all. It's better to come from the source. When did you acquire this car? Which year? 1996. 1996. When was the operation at Iala carried out? 1997. Do you have particulars of the car? Yes, I do. Indeed, my lord, I hope the commission will be patient with me. I am suddenly so upset about this allegation that I would rather hand in the, offic the original documents of the car and also submit the car as exhibit so that I can have peace. Colonel Denry has done it before. He will accuse me again. So I'd like to hand in the original papers and then drive the car from Lagos so that anybody... Of which car? Of the car that I was which alleged... Which car? BMW that I was alleged to have been given as bribe. Did he give the chassis number? Everything is yes. No, no, no. The one he said was given to you. What was the chassis number? Well, I don't know. He didn't talk uh -huh, about nah. that. There are so many BAWs. Yes, sir. It's just only one. Yes. That is true. Well, that is help true us. It's neither here nor there. Yes. Unless you have the chassis number. Yes, sir. And the, what do you call the other number? Engine and serial number. Yes. The particular so that we can compare. Yes. There may be three or four types of BAWs yes, at the same time. But he is here. Giving us one doesn't help us. Well, we may. Sorry. Just on a light, I mean, if you are, if you are ready to dispose of the car, you can bring it. We'll give it to somebody who was detained in military intelligence. Yes, sir. And has no car now. Yes. Sir. But I think on a more serious note, if it were possible for military intelligence, because I can understand what you're saying that may perhaps the onus is on us to ask military intelligence to produce the report. Since, as you said, you would be violating the principle on which you have taught others. Since you said it was under pain of death, I take it that you would have been ready to go to prison rather than... Uh, Absolutely. So sir. perhaps the, nec the next thing is, if we want the report, we'll have to approach uh, military intelligence directly. But meanwhile, as I said, if you want to tender the car to us, you can do that. I'm sure there are quite a lot of victims of military excesses that will be ready to use the car while the case is... <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. But can I make a comment, please? My Lord, I had asked counsel to give me the opportunity to make an apology at the beginning. I want to, I want to make an apology, sir, at the beginning. Apology for whom? To whom? During the last sitting, I referred to Conor Edehere as somebody from Wari. I have since been corrected by the good people of Delta State that is not from Wari. <laughs> that, um, What's the apology then? The apology is this. I make a wrong statement. I thought he is from Wari because he used to boast that he's a Wari boy. The people of Delta have said, please don't associate us with, with your evidence. Yes, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> 
Connor, were you at any time arrested in connection with the operation in Iala? Yes, indeed. I was arrested. When? About the 27, 28th of July 1997, I was in Kaduna as a team leader to conduct examinations for young officers who are going from the rank of captain to major. Usually, the chief of army staff will select people to go and conduct the exam. I was selected by Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamehi to lead the team in that exam. And it was at the venue that I was picked up by gunmen sent after me by Colonel Lide Henry. On 27th? About the 27th, 28th. Okay. 28th, 29th, yes. Were you at any time subjected to investigation? Yes. this operation? Yes, the matter was investigated by the commanding officer, Security Group Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps. Can you briefly mention the names of those that were investigated with you and the procedure? Briefly. Yes, uh, Colonel Steve Nidehene was invited for questioning. I was invited for questioning. Captain F.V.Y. Dulaha was, invite, invest, was invited for questioning. And Lance Corporal Abudime, everybody who took orders from me was in, invited. And we're all questioned. What was the outcome of the investigation? My Lord, it was a long report, 10 pages, in which they established the facts of what happened. I remember clearly that it was about paragraph 22, which said this operation was authorized, funded, and directed by the acting DMI. Who was acting at DMI? Colonel S. M. Idehere. It was also alleged that you wrote Colonel Sabo's paper at Will what at what college? I have already answered this question. I did not write. You've already paper. answered this on record. Yes. We know he did not. He said yes. Colonel Idere has described you as someone that is readily available for illegal activities. What do you have to say concerning this? <laughs> Good. Colonel Idere has always said that, but it is not true. My Lord, he said before this commission that I was a wizard, I could write anything, and that I took a jeep to General Sabo, and the jeep was worth 100 million. But when it came to time to be appointed the boss, he was a year and a month my junior, they left the wizard who could write papers, who could take jeeps with a hundred million, and they, they chose this fellow with inferior, inferior intellect and inferior integrity. Thank you. Do you have anything to say about Colonel Idere? Because he has what accused you of illegality. We have here a human rights violation against some uh, Chuma Zeribe. We do We're not investigating. We do him. respect, my lord. We are not. The commission is not investigating. Him, but Colonel Idere was there when he said. He, he stored bomb in his house, he stored ammunition in his house, that he took car as bribe. He said so many things. So he's here to clear his name as well. Allegations as we made. Don't ask her about that he was retired compulsorily. We will ask him, my lord. Well, that is more important to us. Thank you. What, were you retired? I would answer that, sir. All right. Were, were you retired or dismissed from the army? Me, Lord, I'd like to start from there. And you'll have to excuse me, sir. Were you retired compulsorily? Well, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> because, can you, ex can you explain? Let me explain. Me, Lord, there is a forged document saying that I'm retired. The commander in chief of the armed forces can see me in uniform as I speak. The chief of defense staff can see me. The chief of army staff can see me. So, if I don't have authority to appear in uniform, they should just send the military police after me. And this is what I want to explain. My Lord, this matter was investigated and it was taken up to the Chief of Army Staff, who is very clear now, um, Konedere has always been his counsel. 
They looked at the report and they found it impossible to prosecute. So they sent it back to the director of military intelligence. And I was cleared by the DM. I said, well, I have seen the report of this operation. We cannot proceed further. It is a pity you served under somebody who has no integrity. Please go back to your office. So I went back as director of intelligence production center. You said the answer is yes and no. What is the yes? Good. The yes is what I want to explain now. That you have been retired. No, that you have not been retired. <laughs> Sir, so as soon as General Abache died, things changed around. Then I got a letter uh, saying, well, go to Lagos Garrison Command for jurisdiction. This was on the 20th of July of the next year. They now reopened the case. So I got ready and uh, went to the place I was supposed to be tried. And I met the president of the court. Me Lord, a week later, a very interesting letter, which I want to explain, sir. Please listen to me. Emanated from the office of the director of military intelligence. Let me tell you what had happened. General Sabo had been retired, and an extraordinary officer, Colonel M. A. Dari, had been brought from abroad to be DMI. A fellow traveler with Colonel Idehene, whom he explained to be an intellectual, a certain fellow called Colonel Akeyemi, now wrote a very strange letter. But because I'm a professional, I didn't take the copy, but he said something like this. He said to the chief of army staff, uh, this matter under investigation should not be investigated because Colonel Majo Igwe is an extraordinary man. He used the expression borrowed from the Americans, this officer has performed beyond the call of duty. Therefore, do not prosecute him. However, retire him. Wonderful letter. How can you write something like that? So, because they had arranged it, they now took it to General Bamehi and said, well, sir, we have done what you said. Then, General Bamehi called the MS. This, I was not there. So, please, I wasn't there, but I have been in the system. So, they said, he said, okay, put his name. That one said, what do you mean, put his name? He said, put his name for retirement. That one said, what do you mean? There's a senior officer like you. He was the presidential commission. He said, I will tell Oga. Then, the day I was supposed to appear in court, the documents are there in the army. 17th of August, the same day another letter came saying you are retired. Uh -uh. Appear in court, you are retired. All the letters came in one day and they are there in the army headquarters. So, and I, so I now took the letter and I read it. He said, Army Council has met and has approved we should be retired. Which Army Council? Sir, the ministers of the Army Council are there. There was no Army Council meeting. What did they do? They did a very strange thing. When the Army Council met later, I was surprised that people can be so careless. They now put in the minutes, we retire this man because he do illegal duty. And so, Council now approve. The Council just rubber stamped it. Subpoena them, let them bring the minutes. You will cry. How can you be so careless to say <laughs> Army Council is a rubber stamp? So this is why I'm saying that if you look at the document on the face of it, it gives a false impression of a retirement. But as the lawyers say, the man who signed acted ultra virus. And that document is null and void and of no effect whatsoever. In other words, it did not happen. My Lord, you know that better than me. It is a fake document. It didn't happen. In any case, when they now said go, because they knew that they were playing with fire, they now said, okay, you are retired. You know, what worries me, from what you are saying, you are now asking us not to believe anything the army tells us. At least 90% of them may the, not be true. Ask the army to produce the documents. This is the kind of thing they were doing at the time. Subpoena them, bring army council minutes. They lied there and they said, uh, uh, we have driven him away, you know. I am not tendering it. Ask the army to come and show the minutes of the army council. I could have taken it, but I'm a thoroughbred professional. I won't take it. They know, I read it. This is the kind of kangaroo thing they were doing. So, so, what are we Having said all this, have you been retired? Well, the army says I have been retired and they now did hold it. The army says you've been retired. Yes, sir. Who in normal circumstances should retire you? Army council. 
Army Council. Yes, sir. Army Council did not retire you. The Army, but the Army retired you. Army Council did not retire me. But the Army retired you. No, sir. Lieutenant General Ishai Abame. Colonel. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm interested in what you said about your present uniform. Yes, sir. As far as a layman like me is concerned, the yes, fact sir. that you are in uniform presupposes you are still in service. Okay, sir. So, oh yeah, that's what I said. Where are you presently serving? Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Location. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. When they gave me a letter, sir, I, I'm sorry, sir. I have to give you the opportunity to explain. I'm sorry. When they gave me a letter saying go, they were very careful. Number one, they said, please keep your ceremonial uniform, keep your service uniform, and keep your mess kit. So if there is an official location, you need to see me on October 1. I'm going to be in beautiful ceremonial dress. The army says, take it. That is the law. So they gave you this uniform and said, take it, your mess kit, your ceremonial dress, everything. So I have a letter signed by the army says, Boy, you bloody good. Keep it. Excuse me. Assuming you are dismissed, will you be given the uniform? No. Question asked is not that your uniform yes. is a, an issue. Where is your lo present location? I have been retired by Lieutenant General ah. Bami. So you are retired. Not by the army. Yes, sir. Although you are allowed to keep your uniform. Yes, sir. I see. And I have a letter from the army. But Why let me also say one thing, sir. This is very relevant. Sir, please let me, let me add this. In the letter of retirement, they said services no longer required. In the Army Council, they said he did the legal duty. Let me explain. The reason they did that is this. If they put in my letter of retirement that I committed the legal duty, they will be disgraced in court. So what did they do? They put services no longer required. And they wrote me a beautiful letter of service. Say thank you. You did very well. We seek to stand out that, my lord. Excuse me. Come on, Abdi. Yes. Well, you know, this is a bit, uh, it's a bit confusing for me as a, and as a kangaroo thing, yes, person, but uh, pathetic for me as a citizen because uh, I really find it very difficult to understand. And as the chairman said. Two people or two generals or whatever cannot be telling the truth. Somebody is not telling the truth. And it's a pity that we have to choose yes. whom to believe or whom not to believe. Uh, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit unfortunate, but uh, I guess for us as citizens, this is where we find ourselves. The, the lawyer said, Reps gives a the fact speaks for themselves. Thank you. What's the last exhibit? 42. So when you are retired and left with your, are there some people who are retired and left with their uniform or what? Oh, my Lord, when you are dismissed, not only do they, oh, by the way, let me add an additional point. Uh, just as a clinger, they now pay me 90, over 90,000 naira every month. Thank you. Yes, nine, over 90,000 every month which would not have been if you are dismissed yes let me answer your question directly an officer who is disgraced he, his sword is broken his uniforms are seized and he cannot keep the run Colonel, Colonel, yes sir. let us put it in evidence it helps you a matter i mean yes let's put it in evidence and give it to him to read You can you read produce exhibit 23. Read it. My Lord, to whom it may concern, in lieu of certificate of military service, Colonel Olani Pekomajo Yegwe retired. Colonel Olani Pekomajo Yegwe was born on the 21st, 29th of March 1951 in Ede, local government area of Osho State. He was granted direct short service commission on 26 February 1976 in the rank of lieutenant with seniority in the same rank and same date and later converted to a direct regular with effect from 15 of March 1978. 
He rose to the substantive rank of colonel before he was compulsorily retired from service with effect from 17th August 19. Read that again. Before he was what? Compulsorily retired from service <laughs> with effect from 17th August 1998. Yes, continue. Colonel Major Yogbe held a number of command and staff appointments throughout his years of service in the military. While in the service, the retired officer attended relevant While in service, the retired colonel. Go on. <laughs> uh, Go on. <laughs> While in service, the retired officer attended several relevant courses and performed creditably well. They can say that again with distinction. Thank you. As his certificate of military service is being processed, you are pleased requested to accept this letter as a testimony of his having served in the Nigerian army pending the issuance of the document. This is for your information and necessary action. Signed, SB 23. Glory. Yes, to, to round up, do you have any other thing to say to assist this commission? Uh, my lord, the council asked a question if I had anything to say about Colonel Dehere. But I thank God that I will resist the temptation. This commission is not set up for smear campaign or campaign of calumny. I was in the same unit with Lieutenant General Isaiah Abameyi as a captain. He was a major. General Sabo was a captain. General Abubakar was a lieutenant colonel. So I have known him all this while. Then I became the director of intelligence production center, it means, which means that all the information in Nigeria comes to my office. I have a lot of information. I'd like to give credit, my lord, briefly to the officer who even established the office, Colonel LKK Are, fantastic officer. So it was easy for me to do the job. My lord, I would be descending to the level of most people you have seen here to now come and say, this is what Idehere is. Because that is, this thing is for reconciliation. The National Security Advisor knows it very well. The police have a file. SSS has a file. So if they want to deal with him, let them go and deal with him. Two, I am now a man of God. I have forgiven everyone. I preach in the church every Sunday, say, forgive, otherwise they will not forgive you. I met General Bamehi. I gave him a smart salute this morning. And I said, God be with you, sir. I forgave him in 1998 with tears in my eyes because I couldn't pray. As I tried to pray, the Holy Spirit told me, you are holding somebody down. I called my wife, pray for Ishaya Bamehi. So, I'm not going to talk about him. Nemesis will catch up with him. Those who know him will deal with him. Glory to God in the highest. That's all for him, my Lord. Uh, just, just an aside. Did you watch AIT presentation of your evidence? Uh, I did not, sir. You did not? I did not. Well, I did. Yes, you know what they said? No, sir. They had uh, a civilian Yemi Tokoya and a military Yemi Tokoya. <laughs> Does Ye that ring a bell? Yes, sir. <laughs> and let me answer that. You see, that's what they said. Good. I have to answer because you raised it. My Lord, some journalists are doing a dangerous thing. Ben Do you know Yemi Tokoya? No, sir. I see. They, they but, but, but I've heard you about it. You don't understand it. the joke if you don't know it. No, no, no. I understand the joke, but I want to seize this opportunity. Some journalists are doing a dangerous thing. Generals are fighting generals. Colonel is fighting. Then this, the journalist who is trained to respect the truth and present facts begins to run his mouth. They are deploying money and marabou and juju. I am deploying the power of God. If that journalist gets caught in between, he will be smashed. But I have prayed for Benga Roleba. They should sack him and employ uh, Ogon Sureni. Those are reporters. Fire the fellow and get him out of town. All right. Are you born again? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> That's all for you, my lord. Does anybody want to cross examine? Uh, Colonel, you have been sworn to tell this honorable commission the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, my and lord. And you swore by the Holy Bible. Yes, my lord. Please, can you take the Holy Bible? The Bible. Well, it's not. Oh, okay, yes. 
Could you read Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5? Proverbs chapter 9. Chapter 19, 5. Sorry. You brought a Bible. No, sir. I see. No, I have my Bible there, but this is the commission's Bible. That is what has been helping me all this time. It's going to shame my enemies. Yeah, 19. Yes, sir. 19, 5. 19, verse 5. Yes, I have seen it. Could you read a false it? witness will not go unpunished, nor will a liar escape. Nin I believe that completely. 19, 9. 199 nine. 99 a false witness will not go unpunished and a liar will be destroyed i believe that completely yes can you please look at james chapter 3 and read from verses 2 to 6 my lord as from now, anybody quoting them, but you must obtain permission from me before. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. I like, because I want to take record of all the, the reverends who are <laughs> appearing as lawyers and witnesses and so on. Yeah, Father, I, I agree with you because I'm a graduate of the International Institute of... Uh, yes. And I, I trained and I'm an ordained man of God. It's the best Bible college in the world. It's in Ikoi, Redeemed Christian Church of God. Glory. Yes, what chapter, please? James 3. James chapter 3. Yes, verse 2 to 6. Verses 2 to 6. Yes, I read chapter 3, verses 2 to 6. We all make many mistakes, but those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. We can make a large horse turn around and go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. So, so also the tongue is a small thing, but, but that enormous damage it can do. A tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Verse 6, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness that can ruin your whole life. It can turn the entire course of your life into a blazing flame of destruction, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Yes. As a man of God, Connell, James, James, James. 3, James chapter 3, verses 2 to 6, Yes, ma'am. You would agree with me now, having become a man of God, it is important for you to guide your tongue. Yes, indeed, you're right, my Lord. It will not be correct for any man of God to use his tongue with which he praises God and to also insult. Am I correct? Absolutely, my Lord, you're right. Very well. Now, having accepted to tell this commission the truth, did you receive any letter from the military secretary? I don't, I don't understand the question. Did you receive a letter of retirement from the military secretary? Oh, yes, indeed. Do you have a copy of that? Yes, I do. Please, can you be generous enough to show the commission a oh, copy of that letter? Oh, yes, I do. I am going to tender it because of what the chairman has just drawn my attention to, that I will not be under any liability, otherwise I would have said no. But I do have, please just give me a moment, I'll, I'll fetch it. Is you are we probing now? That is uh, an authentic pastor? No, 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 my lord. I, human he, rights have been committed. I just want to tender that letter and. Uh, to show what? I will stick to my commitment to be. Uh, petition specific, but he mentioned but my name. You swore on oath. To tell the truth, yes, the my lord. Truth, I only and nothing but the truth. I only want that Whether letter. The pastor or not is irrelevant. I will tender that letter and leave the others for address. He mentioned my name, and I think that letter will be relevant in the course of address. Yes, 
Yes, my lord, I have found a copy. Uh, please, uh, my lord, can I tender that document in evidence? Then I hope I'll, I'll be allowed to read it. Very well. Good. Before you read that, were you at any time recommended by the legal department of the army for trial? <laughs> Glory to God. Yes, indeed. And I must explain. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to explain. Your counsel will lead you to do that. You were once recommended yes. for trial. I have not concluded my answer. My Lord, man, a certain man, letter, man of Exhibit God. 21. Man of God. Please, you have Mark answered. it, XB 24. You ask and let him read it. Oh, God. My Lord, I read Exhibit 24. Headquarters, Nigerian Army, Department of Military Secretary, Bonicam, Victoria Island, Lagos. 17th August, 1998. Compulsory retirement, Nigerian Army Officer, Colonel Orlani Pekumajo Yeube. In pursuance of paragraph 11, so paragraph 2C, of the terms and conditions of service of the Nigerian Army Officers, 1984, the Army Council, the Army Council, yes. hereby approves the compulsory retirement of Colonel Olani Pekumajo Yewe, number 5535, from the Nigerian Army, with effect from 17th August, for services no longer required, not for any offense committed. One, two, he says, officer is authorized to retain his rank of substantive colonel. Which is too junior now, but officer is entitled to a certificate of military service. Nigerian Army Pay Office to take the following actions. Pay the officer all his entitlements up to the effective date of retirement. Recover fully from the officer all indebtedness to the federal government of Nigeria and any of its agencies in accordance with the current regulations on the recovery of indebtedness. HQ LGC is to take the following action. They kit the officer, less his ceremonial dress, his service dress, which I'm wearing, and his mess kit. Recover from him all forms of arms and ammunition. Recover from him his Nigerian Army identity card and other military control, uh, control items loaned to him occasionally in the course of service. Ensure that the officer completes the Nigerian National Security Declaration forms attached which must be forwarded to the Department of MS with his identity card. Officer will complete six copies of NA form A453 attached, which must be forwarded to Director of Ability Pensions. Ensure that the officer submits six endorsed passport photographs to Officer's Documentation Department. Occurrence will be published in the Federal Government Gazette and Army Orders in due course. Signed. S.B. Said, Major General, Military Secretary, Army. Thank that, you. That will be all for him, sir. Any other cross examination? Majo Yewe, please. I'm sorry. Colonel Majo Yewe. Yes, sir. Congratulations for being a man of God. I'm congratulating you, sir. Please cast your mind back to the second half of 1996. What was your rank and where and how were you deployed? Second half of 1996. 1996. I was the director intelligence production center that is the hub of activities there that's the last bus stop for intelligence process what was your rank full colonel 
Fou Kone. Yes. As at September 1997. Yes. What was Steve? As at September 1996, what was Steve Kone? What was uh, Kone Steve's rank? He was a lieutenant colonel and one of the boys working in the department. Yeah. And how was he deployed? He was a. Um, Oh, these boys, what were they doing? Okay, he was General Staff Officer 1. General Staff Officer 1. Yes. Great. Very good. As a senior rank, as a senior in rank, an appointment, I mean, you were senior in rank to him. He said so. That's very true. One year you said and so. one month. You said so. One year and one month. Good. That is true. The records bear me out. Where were you when Kone Denry was being appointed as, a, as the acting DM? Glory. Based on merit. You're asking the question and answering it. I was the director of intelligence production center. You asked me where I was. You asked the person who made the appointment. Not me. I would not know. I am a zombie. You, you put me there. I do the job. So if you think that he was uh, appointed on merit, you ask the person who made the appointment. I don't ask those questions. OK. You were senior to him in rank. He was made, he was given an appointment over you. Yes. He now became your boss. Yes. And why, I said yes, sir, to why, him. Why, why were you not appointed, being the senior in rank? Why you not, not? What kind of counsel is this? I, I did not make the appointment. Okay. Ask the person who made the appointment. Major Ebe, My Major is to Ebe. obey instructions. Kone Major Ebe, I put it to you that no one would have considered you to be the acting DMI or even considered you for a post, for a post in DIA. Or any other external appointment because of your known record of involvement in illegal, in illegal duties. Very good. He who alleges proofs. We have had this thing so since July. Illegal duty, illegal duty. Not one has been proved. Now, Colonel Major, you know? there is usually a weekly staff conference. Yes, indeed. Head. Good. Correct. You, do you remember on one of such occasions when Colonel Dari rebuked you as the officer who is involved in illegal duties? Good. Do you remember, yes or no? Yes, I do. Thank you very, very much. Good. But I must explain. Me no, Lord, no, you have answered. You said yes, you do. You do remember. You, see, you, you, like, you, you, you like have answers. I was not rebuked. You said and yes. And I regret that Colonel Dare is being dragged into this. Colonel Major, you have just said yes. You remember that you were being rebuked in one of such meetings. Colonel, don't drag Colonel Dare into this. You see, do you also me, 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 Lord? You see, you ask half questions and you don't want answers because you don't want the Colonel truth. Major, you have oh, please, said can yes. you please learn to pronounce? You if you call yes. me Magic, I will not I'm answer. You that is not my name. Story. Please, please, you are Nigerian. Do you remember also when Colonel Frank Omenka rebuked you? Also on an illegal duty you were involved in. That is Some a lie. That is a lie. Connie Frank could not yes have rebuked no, me. No. Connie Frank could not have rebuked me. He was my junior. He's Thank still you. my junior. He will always remain my junior. Thank you. Are you aware that arms and ammunition are, leak, are highly controlled items in the Nigerian Army? Thoroughly so. Very carefully controlled. Thank you very much. Are you aware also that no arm or ammunition may, may be issued, may not, arms and ammunition will not be issued without due authority? Absolutely so. You're right. Thank you very much. Are you aware that arms, in June 1997, in June 1997, were you, unofficial, were you on an official assignment to Sierra Leone? Yes, indeed. Many times. I don't know which one you're talking about. I was commander of the task force undercover operations of Operation Sandstorm. I was the president of the international panel which investigated the coup of 1996. I mean, I was, I was the task force commander, anti-terrorist operations. So please ask your client which one he wants to find out. Now, Colonel Steve, Colonel Steve, the DMI, the acting DMI, in that year, at that particular time, yes. 1996, when we were on official assignment to Cameroon, uh, Sierra, Sierra Leone, to Sierra Leone, thank you very much, I'm sorry, to Sierra Leone, authorized in writing, authorized in writing, and gave you three AK-47 rifles and some ammunition for that, for that uh, assignment. Which one? To Sierra, so Leone, to Sierra Leone. I to was Sierra Leone. You were listen, given 
listen, listen to me. I was in Sierra Leone so many times. First, to investigate a coup. I'm then talking as... about 2nd June. Oh, 2nd June. Yes. Okay, yes. June. I was um, undercover operations commander, task force. And you duly authorized. Operation San... Yes, you indeed. Signed. You signed. Yes, indeed, I signed. Thank you very much. Did you return the weapons as required by army, army regulations to the arms store by the time you came back from Sierra Leone? No. Thank you very much. No, excuse I put me, it please. to you. I excuse put it to you. Before you put it, I put it let to you me explain. Illegally kept. I put it to you that you illegally kept those arms and ammunition you brought back from Sierra Leone. Good, you thank, knew the right process. Thank you. To return it back to the army, to the arms store in the army. You did not do it. Good. You have said you Counsel, did. I do not blame you. So let me explain now. I have a right you to explain. You have answered. You have answered. No so explanation. You have my, said my yes. Lord, can the commission help me? Let me, you ask a question, let me answer Did the question. Get, I'm asking so, you what happened was we this? We have something called re-examination. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Kone Maju, you signed the pass and movement data. You signed the pass and movement data for the team you sent to Ihala, Ihala before they left for the illegal operations, right? I am not aware of an illegal signed, of You signed a pass and movement data in the office, DMI office, before the team you sent to Ihala left. Did you? Right? Yes, I did. Thank you very and much. And I've admitted in evidence and I've accepted responsibility absolutely unconditional, total. Thank you very much. I said much. I signed it and I accept responsibility for it. In that pass, you stated that the team had 30 rounds of ammunition. Whereas you actually gave them 60 rands, is that correct? I'm not aware of what you're talking about. Is it correct, yes or no? I said I'm not aware. Major Adeka, who carried out an investigation at that time, is here. You see, to testify. Yes, Are you aware, the, yes the, or no? The reason, the reason that I'm choosing not to answer your question is that you are trying to be clever by half. My Lord. Yes. If you ask the question, when you get the explanation, the guy who is briefing you knows that it will answer be shut the down. Question. Answer the question. Are you aware? Aware of what? I mean, okay. I'll, ask, I'll ask you the question again. Yes, ask the question. I said you signed a pass. Yes, you did. You I said did. yes, right? Yes. Good. In that pass, you stated that the team had, you gave the team 30 rounds of ammunition. Yes. Rounds, you yes. You actually gave them 60 rounds. Well, I, the left the, okay. I signed a pass giving the men three Kalashnikov rifles. You have said you signed the pass before. Did you? Okay, carry on. <laughs> Aha. Now, I signed a pass giving the men the rifles and the ammunition. I don't really know what you're talking about now. But... I'll, I'll repeat myself. Yes, but listen to me I very said, carefully. In that pass, you stated that the team had 30 rounds of ammunition. Whereas you actually gave them 60 rounds. Is that correct? I did not actually give them 60 rounds. So if you want no. an explanation, no. you'll get it. Yes or no, you have said no? Yes, I did not actually Thank give you. them 60 rounds. Thank you. Take note. Did you get any written authority? Did you give? Or did, did you, you get? get? Did you get any written authority? No. To issue this AK, three AK-47, as I mean, assault rifles. For that illegal operation? No. No, no, sorry. For that. You have said no. No, 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 no. no. You squeezed in you the word illegal. You, I, I did not squeeze you into any. Difficulty. No, no, no. I mean, you answered Ask the no. question. You said for that illegal operation. I. Said, yes. I, I, with, I with, with due respect to the commission, I believe. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Just ask the question. This is cross examination. You can ask any question. I am craving the indulgence of the council. I want you to ask the question and let him answer, please. Thank you very much, my learned colleague. I'm asking your client the witness question. He's supposed to respond. I'm putting, I'm putting it to you to answer yes or no. So it's left for you to elect to say yes or no. Good. Simple. And explain. No explanations. Yes or no. Explain everything because okay, we do not want to waste time about this. And you, and you spent so much time bringing irrelevances to this commission. I don't want to waste time. You have said yes. Okay that you did not get any written notice. Oh, I did not. My boss at the time 
gave me instructions and I moved like fire. Yeah, he is here. But when you went to Sierra Leone, you yes. got a written authority from your boss. No, because at I that did time, not. You got a written authority. No. He issued you arms and ammunition and you signed for it on the, on the 2nd of June, 1996. You just said so. You did say so. I, I don't think you have But you facts. did not get any written authority you, you from the same boss. You are a mixing, man of God. You are mixing Tell this for me on the truth. You, are mixing the truth. you don't have the facts. So you are mixed. If you ask the question. Let's proceed. Do not Let us proceed. Yes, go ahead, please. I believe you have read the petition and say petition. I dealt with that petition so thoroughly that there are probably there are not many people who don't know now. Point by point. Thank you very much. In the petition you received, yes. in the alleged petition you received yeah. that prompted that made you to carry out that illegal operation at Ihala, what were the allegations made against Chief Shuma in Ziribe that prompted that operation? What were the allegations in that petition you received? Good. I am not going to answer the question the way you have put it because you are talking about an illegal operation and I am not aware of an illegal operation. So if you say for the operation in Ihala, I will answer. So can you please let me help For you a bit? Anyone you put it right on, just tell us. They say anyone. How can I answer anyone? <laughs> okay, fine. I will answer the question to the best of my ability. There was an operation that was carried out. It was my responsibility as the commander of the Special Task Force against uh, terrorism. All right? So I gave the instructions, and I received the instructions from my boss. And I'm standing by the instructions that I gave. My question is, what were the allegations that made oh, you... Good. The allegation against Shishuma in Zeribe that made you to carry out that operation. What good. were these allegations? Good. I had already repeated this. is don't want to waste the time of the commission. I already explained this. My lord, at that time, I was director of intelligence production center. What were these allegations Excuse. on a major Yegbe? Go straight to the point. Point, I mean, one after the other. Yeah. What were the allegations? Good. So Nigerians have a writing petition. So the petitions came, and it said that the bomb blast that occurred in Onicha was the handiwork of Chief Chuma Zeribe, a certain mother of Okwa, and some other people like that, and that they were going to carry out other bombing operations. Yes, that was that is the summary of what was in that letter. The summary, no, you can. I mean, I'm telling you to tell me the content. I mean, the allegations. Point. You have summarized it. Thank you, my lord. I seek to. I mean, I applied to get a copy of Captain Dulaga's uh, statement he made before this honorable commission. SB2, my lord. Please give it to the witness. You have a copy of it? Yes, we have the official copy. Please read, take a look at it. Read page two, the paragraph four of it. That is the top paragraph. On, on 14 July, is that the one? Yes, yes, 14 on, July. On 14 yes. July 1997, Monday, the DIPC called me and directed that I should prepare for an assignment either to Sierra Leone or to Hela in a number of states. He eventually decided on the latter and showed me a petition that was written by a certain Victor Okafor. Then I didn't know that it was his ego. The petition alleged that Marcel Tukum and Zeri before Tunatus DK and Bonaventure, Mado Afokwa, were Nadeko agents responsible for various killings, bombings, and terrorist acts in Nigeria. It also alleged that Marcel Tukum and Zeri had an assembly of military equipment used to produce explosives in his uncompleted building in Ehiala. I was tasked to arrest them along with any exhibits. Please, can I have it? Thank you. Kone Majoyegbi. Majoyegbi, please, please. You Please. have told Kone, thank you, Kone. You told this commission that the petition read that Chief Shuma in Zeribe and Bonaventure and some other people yes. were the people responsible for bombings in Nigeria. That was what you said. Yes. But 
the leader of the team you sent to Ihiala on that operation, for that operation has said, it has said something here that you did not say. You are telling lies to this honorable commission. Do you realize that? You are. Let me read it to you. It says, it also alleged, you said only one phase of, the, of that petition. You it asked me to summarize it. No, I did not ask you any second phase. I asked you, what were the allegations? To recite a document? You cannot recite, but you should remember. You said you summarized, and I was asking you, be explicit one point after the other. But you In decided summary. to go by summary. In summary, you asked me to recite a document, a director of intelligence now, production center like I told you, who receives hundreds of petitions every day. I will now memorize one. It also alleged, according to Captain Dulaga's statement, it also alleged that Marcel Schuma in Zerbe had an assembly, an assembly of military equipment. Assembly, not assembly. As good, thank you. An assembly of military equipment used to produce explosives in his, com in his uncompleted building at Ihiala. So what? So what is the question? You have told this commission lies. I'm putting it to you that you did say you, you are tell entitled lies for this commission now. You are entitled to your opinion. You asked me to summarize a document. It is, it is your opinion. It is your opinion. You are free. You are counsel after all. When and where exactly did you receive this petition? When, in, when did you receive the petition? In my house. When? In your house. When? I mean what time? What year? And the date when? I cannot remember exactly, but I know that it was um, in my office, and I remember that it was in July. Not you said your house, not house again. It's now. You office. have been talking about this house and house. This is what Konedene did and failed in 1997. Thank you very much, Please, Counselor. also tell this Honorable Commission the date you received this petition. I cannot remember exactly, but it came before the 14th July with hundreds of petitions, hundreds of reports, Army, Navy, Air Force, Police, SSS, prisons. You don't know, you don't understand the kind of job I was doing from everywhere in this country. So and what, I was sitting, what date was it handed over to you? If you cannot remember the date on the petition, what date was this petition handed over to you? It was handed over to me on or about sometime between the 6th and the 10th of July. Sometimes between the 6th and yes. the 10th of yes, July. Yes, I can't remember, but I know it was July. Sometimes, you cannot remember, but you know it was July. Sometimes between 10th and 6th and 10th. Thank you, Kone. Kone, please tell this Honorable Commission all the actions you took Thank from you. the time you received this non-existent petition to the time your team, led by Captain Dulaga, left for Ihala. You just ruined your client. Me, Lord, I hope you give me the opportunity to talk because you asked for it. So you listen carefully. Remember also, remember also that he painted a picture of urgency. Me, Lord, this petition... Last week, last week he painted a picture of urgency. You have asked a question. Let proving? me answer the what question. There is no doubt that he investigated. Yes. No doubt Chukwu was arrested. Then the other man set him free yes. when he became so DMI. These are already in evidence. I don't know the purpose of this questioning. My Lord, the purpose sure of that this he question... Arrested? My Lord, the purpose of this questioning is to show that he did not get any official authority from what? the direct... He did not get any official authority from the Directorate of Military Intelligence under the under the, I mean, the hands of acting, leadership of acting DMI, DMI Stephen in the area. Put that straight to him, yes. and we will go on. My Lord, last week he alleged that... No, put it to him that he didn't get authority to go on the investigation. Can I answer your question now? Yes, yes, yes. Good. This petition came... And I went to, to my boss, sir, we have this petition. What do you want me to do? There are two ways this can be handled. I can mean it to you as I have received it. What do you mean by that, sir? You have already gone to uh, send people to hear like. No, sir. He said, she said I should go to the beginning and explain the procedure. She asked the question, sir. That what steps did I take? And that is the, those, those are the steps I want to explain to her. She asked the question. So. She was insinuating that there was nobody who authorized you. Good. So let me answer the and question. You said, no. You were authorized by whom? 
But I can only lead her. But but if I explain That's now, all right it, then. It depends on whom we believe. Yes. It? So Let's then go let's, good. So I went to my boss. All right. He's all right. He said he authorized you. Okay, fine. He said he didn't authorize you. Well, okay. we will resolve yeah. that somehow. Yes. You said but he got a phone call from the people that went. You said. They spoke to him. He didn't reauthorize you. Yes, he did. Was there any written? No, written? there was. He didn't write one letter. When Not he authorized you to go to Sierra Leone in 1996, was there, you have said there was a written authority. That was an international well, one, operation. There was no written authority. Yes. You have in the army, you have standing orders, you have particular orders. You see, it's a pity that you don't understand the, the military system. I, if it I was a military lawyer now. Cornell, I put it to you that Cornell Denry did not authorize you to carry out that. That is why we are in this problem. He's a coward. He gave instructions, he took cover. I gave instructions, and I said, I'm ready to take it. We don't want men like this in this country. It's a dangerous man. <laughs> People who will give instructions and then take cover. This kind of guy can ruin the army. I hope those soldiers will take instructions from their bosses, not minding what they hear already. There are more officers like me than they hear. Colonel. Yes, my lord. I'll be right to say that according to you and according to Captain Dulaga, Dulaga's evidence, you went to Ihiala to raid an, un an uncompleted unoccupied building. That is very true. Thank you. Very true. Very we, true. We have arms, ammunition, bombs, and all those other equipment, according to your alleged petition, we have kept. Did you go with any stiffer dog, sniffer dogs, or detect, detective? <laughs> Me I, mean, I I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude to the council. There was no sniffer dog. We don't use sniffer dogs in military intelligence. We don't use sniffer dogs. So, council, I'll pray for you. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Any prayers to ask the correct questions? When Captain, I want to ask you this question, just be direct. When Captain Dulaga and his team returned on the 18th of July, yes. 1997, what are the things he brought back from that operation? Thank you. They brought some cables, batteries, contractions, things that you know, they were not bombs. I have explained that. You know, you just want cables, used batteries, and things, uh, some yellowish substances, very funny substances. You know, I have already explained that to the council. I mean, to the commission. Progress, progress, please. Well, I mean, what? Okay, where were these items recovered in Shuma in Zeribe's house? Well, I where was, was it recovered? Was it dog? Remember, we are discussing human rights abuse on Shuma Zeribe. Zeribe. Not on this uh, witness. Well, my lord, I have to ask him all these questions because I'm trying to establish a point, my lord. Establish what? The we point have the evidence of uh, the colonel. We have his evidence. We choose and pick. Uh, when we ask for 10 hours, that wouldn't do our job. We will know whom to believe by considering the whole evidence. In your evidence, you claim that the items dug out from Shifshuma in Zeribe's house were not explosives, right? Counsel, the commission, I said there were no bombs. You don't know the difference between bomb and explosive. Right, is it right? You claim that. I did not claim that. You appear to forget this very easily. I said not a single bomb. It was emphasized here, the commission can remember. Not a single bomb. A bomb and explosive are not exactly the same thing. But the petition read, the petition, the alleged petition you received, read that Shifshuma and Zeribe and other people were accused oh. for planting bombs. They were the people responsible for the spate of bombing. So, in so I will wait for the thing to explode before looking. Our counsel, please, please help us. She wants to say something. So they are alleged. My lord, at this juncture, Colonel Major, you don't have to be so patronizing to counsel. Just answer questions. My lord, please. Uh, my Lord, I, I apologize. Madam, God bless you. God bless you. Bless you real good. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, let's... Well, Colonel, if that is the case, there were no explosives, why then did you detain him at all? Good question. Somebody was arrested with some funny substances. 
And the officer came and said, look, we brought these guys. We have these things. I said, okay, fine. We had a petition alleging that they had bombs. Indeed, my lord, the captain said, sir, I suspect that this thing is fictitious. I said, good. I will not explain my own opinion so as not to influence you. But this guy has been arrested. Take his statement. Let us examine the things. Then we know what to do. Was that enough to detain him, Colonel Marjorie? Was that Absolutely enough? Absolutely so. It was enough to detain him. Yes, there were no Lord. explosives found, found in his house. But if I had if I had released him, they would have said he caught somebody with bomb and released. I said, keep this man. Take his statement. Let us examine the thing. You say that is not enough. Con Connell, you are not. Do you own a BMW car? Oh yes, yes, Lord. Thank you very much. Thanks to the laggards of Ezigo. Have you, you have earlier told this honourable commission that when you received the non-existent petition, there was need to react urgently, right? Yes, I did, and I just said it again, and I'm going to say it again if you ask me. Was there any state of emergency in Nigeria as of 1997? Glory. I don't think concept because you gave my, an exam example my, 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 with my Zulu Lord. war. Can Was there any state of emergency in Nigeria as of 1997? Witness, you gave example with Zulu war, the Zulu war. Okay, you have finished your yes question. Can I no? answer? Answer. I'm not going to answer yes or no. I am going to answer the question. My Lord, our soldiers were dying virtually on a daily basis along Western Avenue, Bonny Camp, everywhere. Bomb was exploding as far as Onicha, Ilani Stadium. You are asking whether there was a state of emergency. A formal state of emergency was not declared, but the Directorate of Military Intelligence took the most senior professional in the corps. Glory. Thank and, you. And make him a a task formal commander. state of emergency was not declared. Thank you very much. <laughs> From the time you received that petition, yes. And from the time you allegedly briefed the acting DMI, how long did it take you to launch the operations to Iyala? Good. The acting DMI said before this commission that he briefed the chief of army staff on the 19th. So at least he said that here before this commission and that he had a rumor on the 21st. On the 23rd, he set up investigation to investigate what he had on the 19th. He said it before this commission and then the rumor of 21. I went to the DMI immediately and I told him, look, we have this way. What do we do? My question is this again. Yes. How long did it take you to launch your operations to Iheala? The operation was supposed to leave on the 15th. I don't know why the DMI went. So I told the guys, and they have admitted in evidence that you cannot go because DMI is not in. So they left on the 16th. Mm. Thank you. Take a look at Dulaga's statement again. Please give it to him.